Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I want to talk a little bit about how to set up IIS 775 to use PHP in FastCGI. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, traditionally, PHP runs on IIS as either an IS API extension or a Common Gateway Interface Program, or CGI. Using FastCGI provides a high-performance alternative to CGI by reusing CGI processes to service subsequent requests. Now, PHP still runs single-threaded in one or more processes inside the FastCGI pool. And the version of PHP that we're going to want to use for this is the non-thread safe version. It's very important that we use that one. And you're also going to want to make sure that your server has the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable installed. And I'll have links to all that stuff below, and it'll also be on my blog post to go with this. All right, so now on to the fun stuff. Um, so my server for this one is going to be a ESXi virtual machine running Windows Server 2008 R2, and I've already went ahead and installed the IIS role. Um, so let's head over to the server manager, and you see under rules I have the web server or IIS, and uh, you, you just want to scroll down here and take a look at the rule services. So one thing you want to make sure you install is the CGI service. If you missed it when you were installing yours, you can just, on the right hand side, you can add role services and go ahead and add it then. But uh, you do want to make sure that you have that installed before we move on. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is head over to a php.net and look at their Windows binaries and sources. So the thing we're looking for here is the x86 non-thread safe version. Now you'll see that there's a thread safe and there's also a 64-bit and non-thread safe and thread safe, but they are experimental builds. So we want to stick with the regular x86 version. So you just want to go ahead and download that zip file, but I've already downloaded it, and then we're going to extract it and, and paste it into our folder. So this is what the zip file looks like, and when you extract, extract it, this is what you should see. So you want to take all these files and copy and paste them into your install folder where I chose to put a PHP folder right off the root of C. So I just right click, made my new folder, and then copy and pasted all those files into there. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is create and edit our PHP.ini. And you'll see that PHP comes with two different versions, the development and the production version. And I've saved any changes that I've made into this text file here. So for FastCGI, the changes we want to make are FastCGI.impersonate. You want to change that to 1. CGI Fixed Path Info, you want to change that to 1 as well. And CGI Force Redirect, you want to set that to 0. And you also want to make sure that you set your extensions directory correctly, as you see here for Windows, and enable any extensions that you need. As you see, I'm using the MySQL i.dll. And an optional step is to set the open base there, and you would set that to your website's content folder, and that will restrict PHP to only operate within those folders. So go ahead and take one of those templates, copy it, change it to your php.ini file and apply all the settings that I just showed. Some of them you might need to just uncomment, some you might need to uncomment and change the value and that's all there is to it. Once you've done that with your PHP INI file, the next thing we need to do is pull up a command prompt. And you'll notice here that I changed the command prompt to the directory that I installed PHP to. And the next thing we need to do is type PHP space dash I. And it'll give us all kind of information about our PHP install. This is how we know that it installed correctly and is working. All right, so the next thing we need to do is tell IIS to use PHP via FastCGI. So we're going to go to our IIS manager, click on our server, and go to our handler mappings. And then the next thing we want to do is add a module mapping. All right, so for our request path, we want to use wildcard.php for our module we want to use the fast CGI module and for our executable we want to point to the path of our PHP install so we're gonna to go to C PHP install and we're gonna change it to executables and we want to pick the PHP dash CGI dot exe we're gonna click open and then it asks us for our names and I'm just gonna use PHP via fast CGI and then I'm gonna click OK and it says, do you want to create a FastCGI application for this executable? Click yes, because we do. And that's it. So that's it. PHP should now be fully configured and working on our IIS server. So let's go ahead and test this out. So let's go ahead and head up to our root level of the server here and check out our default documents real quick. You notice that there's no PHP file, so let's go ahead and add one. So I'm just going to add the index.php and click OK. 
And um, these do apply in a certain order. Whoever's at the top gets served first. So you notice that I put my PHP file at the top there. And uh, that's really all there is to it. So let's go ahead and minimize that and pull up a web browser. You know what, actually before we get to that, let's go ahead and take a look at my PHP file I'm gonna use here. So we'll head over to my data drive and my www root folder under the default site in my index.php. So let's go ahead and open that up with Notepad++ and you'll see this is a pretty plain Jane HTML file with a PHP echo statement. So if we see PHP fast CGI is working, we know PHP is working. So let's go ahead and browse over to that. So I'm on the server, so I'm just gonna use localhost and we see that it echoes correctly. So that's it. We now have PHP via FastCGI working on IIS 7.7.5. Now, one other thing I want to mention here is if we break PHP, like you'll notice here, I'm going to remove one of the quotes to break my PHP script and save it. And if we view it via the local server, it will actually output the error and the information to help us troubleshoot the issue. But if you view it via a remote client, the default settings will just give you an internal server 500 error. So if you're trying to troubleshoot PHP, Try it out on the local server and it'll probably give you more information that'll help you figure it out. And that pretty much wraps up this video and thanks for watching.